hardly anyone is even aware that it's going on. And that is, we're all concerned. We hear every day about the atrocities that are committed in, in uh, uh, Libya and about the people that are being mowed down. And what they don't realize is that's not the only place this is going on. I have to share, as much as I hate to do it, because I'm disagreeing with our State Department when I say this, but I have to, I have to say it because somebody has to say it. Right now, the, the potential of having large numbers of people uh, tortured, uh, murdered uh, in Cote d'Ivoire is taking place. And let me just say, kind of set the stage here so that people will be aware of it. I've had occasion to be in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire, some people call it the Ivory Coast. It's in West Africa. It's an area where a lot of the slave trade came from, that came to this country. It's uh, a place that has been led by a president named Laurent Bagbo for the last, uh, since, uh, well, the last 10 years. Uh, I first became acquainted with the, with the country uh, back before he was president of, of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. In fact, his wife, Simone, who is now his wife, was not his wife at that time, and she was a member of parliament. And so I, I watched, I kind of sat through what happened in 2002 when there was a real effort by, primarily by one individual, uh, his name is uh, Alassane uh, Owatra, uh, uh, from the northern part of, of Cote d'Ivoire, uh, charging uh, against him. Now it's kind of interesting because Cote d'Ivoire is one country, but up in the north, you have primarily the Muslim area in the south uh, and east, primarily the, the Christian element. And so there's been a real effort for, uh, for quite some time for the chosen one up there, who's Alassane um, Ouattara, uh, to defeat uh, uh, President uh, Bagbo. Now here's the, the, the problem that we have. There was an election that took place a few months ago uh, when it appeared that uh, um, that uh, Owatra actually beat the incumbent president, President Bagbo. And so we were all concerned about this in terms of was it a, a straight election, and I'm going to tell you in a couple of minutes here why it was not, but also tried to... Uh, 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 to, to call this to the attention of the administration. Uh, right after, way back in January, after the election took place, I wrote a letter to Secretary Clinton, and I said, I'd like to have you reevaluate. I'm going to have that letter as, uh, at the conclusion of my remarks as a part of my statement to be printed in the record. But uh, uh, to look at this and evaluate this as to what, what actually went on in that election and uh, how it was, uh, it was rigged. Uh, Otara tried to deny the involvement in a mass slaughter that took place just this, uh, a couple of days ago. That was in a town called Duquay. Duquay was in a town in the southern part of the, uh, an area that was very strong, in, strongly in favor of President Bagbo. And uh, somewhere between 300 and 1,000 people in that western town of Duquay were slaughtered were with uh, guns and with uh, machetes. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Watara and his people tried to deny their involvement in the mass slaughter, but the forces took place in the, in the town days earlier, and ba the Bagbu forces were not even near the town. They had left the town a week before this happened. And so, uh, don't believe me, but The Guardian, which is a British newspaper, reported last night, just last night, they said, and I'm going to quote now from the newspaper, it said, the UN mission said traditional hunters known as dozos fought alongside Watra's forces and took part in killing 330 people in the western town of Duquay. The International Committee for the Red Cross said at least 800 people were killed in the, uh, the, the violence, and I'm still uh, quoting from the newspaper, uh, last week. What we don't know is that 800 plus the 330, so roughly it's 1,000. Um, well, I'm a uh, Haifa, who's the deputy head of the Human Rights Division of the United Nations mission in Ivory Coast, blamed 220 of the deaths on the pro Owatra forces. The, for, uh, the full article it goes into a lot of detail. Also, the British broadcasting uh, BBC reporter at uh, De Quay wrote in the last 24 hours that I spot four pigs eating something dark in, in a charred courtyard standing by a newly dug mass grave. A UN soldier from Morocco is 
choking with rage and grief. I ask him if any of the dead are children. He nods and begins to sob quietly into his face mask. I repeat, the massacre was not caused by the Bagbo forces, but by the Watara forces who had taken over the town. President Bagbo has called for a ceasefire repeatedly. I repeat that. He's called for a ceasefire, but the Oratra forces have rejected it. Why? This massacre could have been avoided if the Ouattara had accepted mediation through the African Union. On March the 27th, an AU, the African Union sent former Cape Verde Foreign Minister Jose Brito to mediate between Ouattara and Bagbo. Bagbo accepted mediation, Ouattara did not. <coughs> I've been following the, the, the events closely in Cote d'Ivoire since last fall and have spoken with various African dignitaries. I'm convinced that there is a serious question as to whether Ouattara is the legitimately elected president of Cote d'Ivoire. I've received substantial evidence of massive voter fraud in the uh, rebel-held north of Cote d'Ivoire. That's the area from which uh, Ouattara comes. Uh, and, and I've sent the evidence to the Secretary of Clinton on two occasions spanning the last few months. One of them is where we actually have the evidence of the number of votes that were stolen. Uh, in one letter I pointed out, this is the last letter, which I'll make a part of this record, uh, to the evidence which shows that Watara received 94,873 votes that were listed on a tally sheet for one of, of the five regions in the rebel-held north times this by four, and it comes to uh, very close to the margin of victory uh, from uh, that, that allegedly President Bagbo lost, that's 400,000 votes. So if indeed a similar amount of voter fraud exists in these four regions, Bagbo is the actual winner of the November 28th presidential election. But if that's too complicated, look at it this way. In those five regions, they don't call them precincts up there. Well, some of the small ones they call precincts, so it's a little confusing. But in the first letter that I sent in, I commented that Bagbo, in during the, what we would call the primary, had won thousands of votes in each one of those five precincts up north. However, in the primary runoff, he got zero. And I suggest to you, Mr. President, that is a statistical impossibility. You can't get zero, particularly after you've already had thousands of votes. Now, my letter to Secretary Clinton, I called for the United States to support new elections there, but thus far these efforts have received an inadequate response. Based on the news that uh, Uatra has murdered some 1,000 people in uh, Duquay, uh, I hope that the U.S. will reconsider its position and, uh, and call for a new election. This Wednesday, April 6th, will mark the 17th anniversary of the 1994 Rwanda genocide. I went back for the anniversary of that genocide. I've been there many times before. We know that the UN General uh, Secretary General um, uh, Kof, uh, uh, Kofi Annan and others knew the extent of this violence early on but did nothing to do it. Well, now we know there could be another genocide occurring, occurring and we do know in advance. And that's why the United States is going to have to call for an immediate ceasefire to prevent Uatra and his rebel army from committing a mass slaughter of the Ivorians, especially the many youth with sticks and baseball bats who are protecting President Bagbo at the present time around the presidential palace. You've got to get this mental picture. You've got these kids, young kids, who are marching around. They don't have any weapons. They're carrying baseball bats and two-by-fours. And I've also been told that within the last half hour, that the United Nations helicopters, U.S. UN peacekeeping helicopters, are firing on Bagbo's military camp, causing massive uh, explosions. Now, there could be some confusion on this, because two of the articles that came out in the last half hour, one of them was talking about the French, who are kind of behind in supporting, of course, Ouattara, uh, that they are involved in this. The other says the U.N. I'm not sure. One of the two is. 
Lastly, I've sent a letter to uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman uh, John Kerry. And by the way, I talked to him personally about this. He is very concerned about it. I have requested that he convene a hearing as soon as possible into the atrocities committed by forces loyal to the rebel leader Ouattara, as well as into what I believe were flawed elections uh, that gave legitimacy to his claim of the presidency. Uh, so I do ask unanimous consent that now, at the conclusion of these remarks, placed in the record immediately following my comments would be the uh, the two letters sent to Secretary Clinton along with a letter sent to uh, uh, Senator Kerry and with the uh, calculation or of the miscalculation of the election that I honestly in my heart believe was stolen. This is what we're asking to be put in the record. This is the tabulations of the precincts and the add up of the precincts in just one precinct there were there was a mistake of over 80, uh, 85,000 votes just in one precinct. Uh, so I ask the consent those may be made a part of the record. Without objection. And I uh, yield the floor.